welcome back to Becky Amy Horse Training and we're on day two of halter breaking a weanling. This is last call to streak and this is the second session. Now it goes really, really good, spoiler alert. Um, this is Seth's second time working with this colt and putting him in this pen back here actually went really, really well today. We brought out a smaller halter to put on him this time that fit him quite a bit better and this colt takes to it really, really well. In our last session, I talked about how Seth had never really halter broke or worked with any speed bred type horses. And I guess I have a little more insight to this than he does. I actually halter broke and started this colt sire. He is my personal horse. And I've started uh, three or four now of his uncles as well. All very, very reasonable horses to get along with, very easy to get along with, not challenging at all, very textbook. I'm not surprised that this second session goes as well as it does with this colt. I'm, I'm not surprised at all that he kind of flips a switch and, and makes a big change in this second session. Seth was really surprised. He anticipated a lot more fighting and resistance. He, he anticipated another runoff. And for me personally, I kind of knew this colt was going to have a good mind just because of how good his daddy's mind is. And like I said, he's one of my personal riding horses and just super easy to get along with. I wouldn't continue to ride or breed this particular pedigree, this particular line, if I didn't believe in the temperament on these horses. Because after all, what I'm looking for is something really user-friendly that wants to get along, that wants to make everybody's job easier, that, you know, wants wants to make you feel like you're a horseman you know we all kind of want to go out and feel like we're getting along good with our horses and we're doing a good job with them we don't want to be frustrated by them so seth goes and lets this colt out of the pen and he was really anticipating this colt to run off again and he comes out really calm and quiet if you didn't see the first session with this colt i encourage you to go back and watch that session uh, part one and part two, because this colt leaves this pen like he is jumping out of the starting gate. And he learned pretty quick that that wasn't acceptable behavior with Seth. And Seth uh, taught him how to give to that resistance pretty quick. And so we see this colt try to leave again at that sort of speed. Not quite the same speed, but he wants to leave again and he gives right away and I attribute that to all of the work Seth did in round one of teaching this colt to give to that pressure. If you go back to that second part of the first session, uh, we talked about how when these colts have a big fight in them and once they figure it out, they figure it out for good. So you'll find that the ones that fight a little bit harder are going to learn the lesson. They may not learn the lesson as fast, but once they learn the lesson, they've got it and it sticks with them. And this Colt had a pretty good fight the first day. He had a lot of resistance. Now look at him. He's already starting to follow Seth around quarter turns, half turns. Um, this is was really important to Seth that these Colts are following him and moving his their shoulders and coming around in this circle. And, you know, Seth told me it was because... He finds that they have full focus on him and getting that shoulder to move starts with that giving to pressure to get that step forward. But getting that circle helps get the momentum going. He comes back up to him. He pets him on the head. He always goes back to that head. That head is a sacred place to go back up and pet them on the head. He's also setting them up for when he gets to take the halter off later on, you know, putting the halter on, taking it off. So back and forth, back and forth, getting this colt to give to pressure and also leaving his buddies as his buddies walk back and forth across the pen with him. You know, he has to pay attention and behave himself despite these distractions because let's be honest, he's going to have distractions his entire life. He's always going to have distractions. He's always going to want to go with his friends, but he's going to have to resist those urges and partner up with whatever human is working with him. Seth continues to work on his relationship with this colt, petting him, asking him to take a couple steps. He never jerks on him or pulls on him. He puts a tiny bit of pressure on that lead, takes whatever this colt's going to give him, and then go back, release the pressure, and pet him on his head again. 
So he's getting little steps at a time. He's not asking for, you know, huge, huge progress here. He's just doing relationship building exercises with this colt. And he's going to keep this session really, really short. Now, this entire video is about 11 minutes. And I will confirm you guys that I didn't edit anything out of this video. We went from 45 minutes in the first session to just a little over 11 minutes in this second session. And we kept it really short and sweet. Seth moves this colt out away from his friends and continues to pet on him. And he's going to find some holes. He's going to find some places where this colt doesn't like to be touched, you know, especially on his right side, it seems. Left side, he's handling okay. When he goes to the right, he flinches a little bit, wants to move away. We'll know from that very moment that that's a little bit tougher side for him. We have Jumper come in and inspect Seth's work and decide that it's all going okay and he leaves the situation. We have these other two colts come in and they get, you know, they get back in the way again and they distract him a little bit. And a little bit colt's starting to get a little bit irritable. You know, he's getting a little bit frustrated with Seth and he's backing away. His head goes up in the air and Seth just goes with him, you know, he keeps, he keeps him close. And then, of course, our friends leave again and this colt wants to go with him. But, you know, the fact that he's willing to stay here with Seth, he's, he's willing to stay here, keep some slack on the line. You know, those are all good signs to me. And Seth's trying real hard to find a place to wrap it up at this point. Again, lots of petting on the nose and the face. Not to be irritating, but we're trying to develop this rapport with this colt that it's okay that we touch his face. Again, face is a sacred place. We're going to have to do a lot of stuff with this colt's face his entire life. So we want to make sure that our touch is very gentle and it's accepted. And this is where it gets really good with this colt. If you stuck around this long, I sure appreciate you guys hanging out because this is where Seth really starts to get quite a bit of movement out of this colt. His whole focus and goal for this entire session is to get this colt to turn in a complete circle, remain focused on him. The colt wants to leave for a second there. No big deal. He gives in really quick. I mean, nothing like our first session at all, right? And he gets him to follow him around in this circle several times, both directions. So huge, huge plus for us. We call this a win. Again, a lot more petting. Even though he has his friends standing there, they're doing whatever they want. This colt doesn't understand why he doesn't get to do what he wants. But he's in, getting a good lesson in patience and focus. And, you know, team building exercise with Seth. Learning how to, uh, you know, be a partner and allow Seth to lead him. Give to pressure. Stay patient. You know, all of those really, really good things that we're looking for in our youngsters. And, you know, for our horses, the, the lessons that are going to stick with them the rest of their life. If you find that your cold is starting to lose its patience, it's getting uncomfortable emotionally and mentally with whatever you're working on, always try to retreat back to the place where he was most comfortable. So go to one step down. That's why it's so important to put this foundation on them and essentially trigger stack. You know, find the thing that they're okay with and go back to the thing that they're okay with. And in this case, Seth is trying to finish up the session and he keeps going back to this colt trying to rub on his face and get this halter off and this colt isn't okay with it. His answer is a little bit of resistance. We see some tension in the front legs. We see him step backwards. We see him raise his head. And so Seth tries to get him to step, take a few steps, you know, move those shoulders around a little bit and get him moving his feet again. You know, we can always get something out of them, you know, when we move them around. When we get some physical movement, we can get through to them a little bit more emotionally and mentally if we get that sort of foot movement. And that goes for everything. If you guys have been following me for any period of time, you know that one of the things that I preach when I'm on their back and we're having a problem is drop to trot lead changes. We have to get those feet movement moving and we have to get them changing directions. So Seth keeps going back and forth and back and forth on this cold head trying to get this halter off at this point. He's asking for some some for some for him to lead a little bit forward he's asking him to take a few steps towards him and he's trying to go back to petting and rubbing on this colt's head again 
To recap what this little bay colt has learned in his second session of halter breaking is for one, he's allowing Seth to touch him on both sides of his face. And then he's also giving to pressure. He's dealing with lots of distraction here, even though he wants to go be with his friends and he wants to leave, he's staying connected to Seth. He's moving his shoulders back and forth really well, both directions in a complete circle. And he's even taking a few steps forward. And so huge, huge progress with this Colt. I'm really pleased with where he's at just after the second session. If you miss the first two sessions with this Colt, I will include the link in the description box. It was one session and I separated into two videos because it was quite long. I showed how we caught him the first time and then I showed what we went through with that first session with him and they were quite long so i will include them in the description box below stay tuned as we continue to work through more sessions with this colt halter breaking him teaching him to lead to pick up his feet how to be brushed walk over a bridge and a bunch of other stuff so stay tuned i really appreciate you guys watching i hope you have a great rest of your day thanks again